Hello and welcome to our daily Bible study. My name is Geoffrey Farrer and I'm a superintendent minister in the Richmond and Hounslow circuit in South West London and it's good to be with you again. I do hope that you are as well as possible in these strange times. Before Easter during Lent we ran with my, uh, my colleagues and I ran a daily Bible study where we reflected upon a different passage each day and many people uh, like you watched them and you said that you enjoyed them and that you found them helpful so we've decided to continue them for a time after Easter uh, and we hope that it will help you in your daily devotions and Bible studies and that it might help you to feel connected again as part of the church at this strange time. We're going to take a theme each week rather than working our way. We didn't thought we wouldn't start at Genesis 1-1 and continue. Um, we thought we'd take a theme each week and look at different passages from the Bible. And this week, as we are still in the season of Easter, we thought we'd look at the resurrection appearances of Jesus as we find them in the New Testament. Now, one question that we often encounter when we think about the resurrection appearances of Jesus is why there are so many different accounts. The stories before Easter of the Passion story, as we talked about in Holy Week, have many similarities in all the Gospels. There are differences, but they're very similar. The resurrection appearances have more distinctive differences between the different Gospel writers and, of course, with Paul, whom we'll talk about at the end of the week. Now, one reason for that we get from Paul's letter to first letter to the Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians 15, he writes, For I handed on to you as of first importance what I had in turn received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared, and that he appeared to Cephas, that is to Peter, then to the Twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers or sisters at, at one time. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last, he also appeared to me. That's a bit of a paraphrase. But what's clear, and what's clear from the Gospels, is that Jesus appeared after his death to many of his disciples and many of his followers, and they all kept and treasured their accounts of those moments. And we'll hear about Paul's on Friday, as I said. And the Gospel writers, who we think, we don't, know huge amounts always about the gospel writers were writing within different Christian communities in the uh, in the years after Jesus's uh, resurrection and ascension um, had different stories clearly that they treasured and valued and that were kept and handed down as Paul as Paul said that word handed down from which we get the word in Latin tra tradition traditio to hand down those stories were hand down and carefully preserved within their communities and the gospel writers preserved them, and using other sources as well. So that explains some of the reasons for some of the differences, but we'll think about those during this week. But also the different accounts bring out different elements and different aspects of what Jesus' resurrection meant to those whom he encountered. We're going to start, and we'll talk more about all these issues during the week, but we're going to start with Matthew, and that's in part because this year in our lectionary, we, our gospel readings come from Matthew, and that's the account we heard read on Easter Sunday uh, during our circuit service. He's also, it's taken from, he, he takes his basis, his account on Mark, and we're going to talk about Mark's account on Wednesday. Um, and it's also a very straightforward account of the resurrection. We'll talk about the variations later in the week. Um, so we thought we'd, I'd start with Matthew, and we'd just talk about perhaps about the resurrection more in general. But let's go straight in then, in Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. And as always, if you look below in the, com in the description box below, there should be a link to the NRSV version of this passage, which I'm reading. Matthew 28. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. 
For fear of him the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are differences in the different accounts of the resurrection, many of them quite small. The um, In Matthew's account, we, he gives us uniquely, he tells us that there was an earthquake at the time of Jesus' resurrection, and that uh, helped roll the stone away from the front of the tomb. He is the only one who mentions the guards. Uh, he mentions only two women, while Mark lists three women. And he mentions only one angel, whilst Luke has two, or two people that seem like angels. Now, we could focus on those differences, but I think it's more important to focus on the similarities between the Gospel accounts, because they are, they are much more significant, and they are what enable us to celebrate Easter, because we, if we had four different, completely different accounts, we couldn't really celebrate Easter, and we wouldn't be able to um, have the hymns we use and all the rest of it. Because the Gospel writers do agree, agree on a great deal. They agree that Jesus uh, was uh, raised from the dead on the third day, on the day that we would call Sunday. They agree that women were key to the discovery of Jesus. They agree that Jesus rose from the dead and was physically present with the disciples. Here in Matthew's account, the, the women cling to his feet. He wasn't a ghost, and that's something that the other gospel writers agree about. And that they agree that Jesus appeared to his disciples repeatedly. And those are key points of agreement. Now, there are, of course, different understandings and understandable doubts about these stories of the resurrection because people, as we know, don't usually come back to life. And that, of course, is what we exactly what we hear in the Gospel accounts. We heard that in the account of Matthew. The women were terrified. They shook um, because they, had, they were seeing a dead man, a man whom a few days before they had seen tortured and crucified and dead on a cross. And suddenly he's come back to life. So it is understandable that we have doubts and question marks. And later in the week, my colleague Jessica Dalton, one of our local preachers, will talk about Thomas's experience with the risen Christ. It's very important, though, that we see this resurrection not as a one-off um, miracle or a, uh, or a, a magic trick. Uh, one of my favourite jokes about the resurrection is um, a, a Sunday school teacher asks her class, what was Jesus's first words after he rose from the dead? answer ta-da it wasn't like that it wasn't a magic trick or a joke it was the culmination of everything that Jesus had been talking about and teaching about for his entire ministry and we see many predictions of his resurrection and we can see it as as other writers in the New Testament say as the first fruits of the kingdom of God that mysterious entity that Jesus spoke about so many times where the values and the understandings of our current world would be reversed. So the rich would be poor and the poor rich, and the dead would become alive. And I would say to us that we should have confidence in the accounts of the resurrection and have faith in what they are saying to us. And there's many reasons for that. I'll just list a few very briefly. Firstly, and most importantly perhaps, if it hadn't happened, if Jesus hadn't been raised from the dead, we simply wouldn't be here today. 
world would not be here, the churches wouldn't be here, the scriptures wouldn't be here in the way they are now. Because there were many people like Jesus who performed wonders and seeming miracles. There were people who were rabble-rousers. There were people who were crucified. There were people with large groups of disciples and big followings, very popular people we know about from uh, the Bible and from many other historical sources. But when they were killed or when they died, their movements ended. There was something about Jesus' life, ministry, death and resurrection that meant his movement continued long, long after his seeming end. Something was different about Jesus and the only real answer is the resurrection. Also, if the resurrection was just a giant hoax, a giant forgery, then you wouldn't have the women involved. Jessica's going to talk a bit more about the involvement of the women in the resurrection story tomorrow. But just to say that, sadly, in ancient times, there were not such enlightened views about the role of women. And if you were going to fake a resurrection, you would have had men finding the empty tomb and being witnesses, not the women. And in a similar way, if this account were a forgery, if Jesus hadn't been raised from the dead, then I find it impossible to believe that the apostles would have behaved as they did, where they were willing to, to die for the truth of Jesus's life, death and resurrection. And they were willing not only to put their own lives on the line, but to completely reverse their entire faith, to acknowledge that Jesus was God, to bend the knee and worship him, as we read later in Matthew's account, and to change the Sabbath day from the Sabbath that the Jews know, Friday and Saturday, to Sunday, the Lord's Day. All of these reasons, and many more, give me confidence that the resurrection did take place, as is described in our Gospels. Just to conclude, though, and of course, I would always say that people within the Methodist tradition are allowed and encouraged to reflect upon the scriptures and reach their own conclusions. That perhaps the most important aspect of all of this is those repeated assurances and, and those uh, commands we read in that passage. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. We hear it. The angel says and then Jesus says it. Do not be afraid. And we find that commandment so often in the Gospels and in the Bible. Do not be afraid. And Matthew very neatly sums up his work. He begins with the promise of God with us, Emmanuel, the Christ child. And at the end, in a few verses after those I've just read, when he ascends to heaven, he says, I am with you always to the end of the age. So the promise of Matthew is that we need not be afraid because God is always with us wherever we go. And in these times especially, I find those words a great comfort. But I'd ask you to reflect now and to say, what does the resurrection mean to you? And we all have different understandings and we're going to read the different gospel accounts and Paul's account. What does it mean to you? And what, how does it change you as a person, that the knowledge that God raised Jesus from the dead on the third day. So I leave you to ponder at that point, and uh, I hope you enjoy our later sessions. But let's, before I go, just pray for a moment. Loving God, we thank you for your words of scripture, which continue to challenge and comfort us. However we understand your resurrection, Help us to take to heart those words that you spoke on that first day after your resurrection. Do not be afraid. And those words you spoke at before you ascended, for I am with you always. Help us, Lord, not to be conquered by fear, but to know that you are always with us. Amen. Well, tomorrow, Jessica Dalton is going to be speaking about uh, the first account of the resurrection in John's Gospel. Then on Wednesday, I'll talk about Mark's account. Then Thursday, Jessica's back talking about uh, 
the second story, another story in John, Doubting Thomas, as he's often known. And then finally on Friday, I'll talk about uh, Paul's experiences in the Acts of the Apostles. I do hope these sessions are helpful. Please subscribe below and then you'll know automatically when a new video has been posted. Thanks very much for listening. Goodbye.